So, welcome back to another episode of This Old Gat. Uh, what we have here today is a 7188 Dutch Beaumont Vitali magazine conversion, obviously. I just picked this up about a week ago, actually three weeks ago, but it just arrived a week ago. And it is in remarkable condition for being 150 years old. And uh, I picked it up out of a place called Sacanet Outfitters up in Rhode Island. And they were very accommodating. And I'm very happy with this, despite the fact that I think I paid way too much for it. But I really wanted it, so I got it. Why did I buy it? Well, basically, it's because it's the kissing cousin of this. Which, if you're familiar is in a 1870-87 Italian Vetterli. Swiss Vetterli, rather. Sorry. <laughs> Vetterli Vitali magazine conversion. So, despite the fact that they look similar on the magazine, they are slightly different shaped. And I have a theory about why it's shaped like this that I'll share with you later. But anyway, this is going to need a little bit more work over here because of that really poor checkering attempt. And I'm still trying to hone my craft before I try to fix someone else's mistake there. So this will be a later episode, even though I got this rifle earlier, about a month ago. But anyway, on to the Beaumont. So, subtle differences, obviously the shape of the magazine, uh, the way that the bolt works. This one actually has the cocking piece spring built into the bolt handle here. It's a two piece bolt handle. As you can see, there's a seam there. Um, it doesn't look like it has any way to actually lock the settings for the rear sight, but it's got tension built into it and really clear lines here. So I'm not really worried about that, honestly, but it's nice. And this one actually came with the cleaning rod right there that I spent 20 minutes turning, hoping it would unscrew. And then I realized, oh wait, it just pulls right out. So that's my fault because I came from an Italian Carcano before I started playing with this one. So anyway, as you can see, it's a little grubby. It's gonna need some cleaning. I'm gonna do some uh, pre-restoration inspection and whatnot, but uh, just so you're aware, this is supposed to be blued. This is blued. Um, just the leaf is blued, and everything else is actually supposed to be in the white. The barrel, the bolt, the bands, the springs, cleaning rod, all of it. So as you can see, it's got a pretty, oops, sorry. It's got a pretty funky layer of grime on there. I think what I'm gonna do is once I get this out of the stock, I will uh, hit this with hops and just a green sc scotch bright pad so I don't actually scratch the metal. But this is just years of grime and finish and dust and slime and oil and whatever. So I'm, I suspect this will clean up really good. And I'll, I'll take a buffer wheel, um, like a soft felt buffer with my Dremel and some Mother's Mag polish, and I'll clean up this bolt surface here just to make it nice and clean. And uh, what I'll probably do is I'll take the rear leaf side apart so I can go ahead and clean this and I'll boil the leaf and the trigger guard and the sling swivels, which are very, very stuck, but I've got some croil for that, as you can see there. So we'll be boiling a couple of pieces, just this and this, if I can get it out. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna have to boil that. Trigger guard, sling swivels, the screws, the butt plate, which I think is supposed to be in the white. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and clean all that up too. But anyway, I just wanted to show it to you as I had received it. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get it all apart and out of the stock. Basically, this band will come off by squeezing the spring and just wiggling it out pretty cool you wiggle it forward and then you turn it 180 degrees and the front sight hood passes a groove here this one you just push forward also so the bands are easy I believe this comes up the action screw is here and I think this is just the trigger guard screw and I think that's it really the bolt comes apart in a pretty interesting way it's actually a two-piece bolt hang on a sec Try to do this one-handed, and that thing is stiff. Hang on a sec, let me just bump it. Nope, that ain't gonna work. Excuse my knee. All right, there we go. 
So anyway, uh, this is a two-piece bolt. Basically what you do is you take this one screw out, you pull the bolt handle back, and the bolt head and everything will stay forward. You pull that out from the front, you pull this out from the back, and then you have full access to it. But I definitely want to clean this all out because the magazine cutoff is a little bit stiff. I've got it to work, but once I get all this apart, I'll be able to clean it up, oil her up, make her all nice and smooth. Because you can never have too many O's and smooth. But yeah, we'll deal with that. We'll deal with that later. Just wanted to show it to you to let you know what I've been doing the last couple of weeks. So the next time you'll see this, it should be all apart. Stand by. All right, so here is a 71 Dutch Beaumont Vitale all taken apart. As you can see, there's really not a whole lot to it. If you take your time and you're patient, you won't split the wood, you won't break anything, you won't ruin anything. I've laid it all out in this arrangement so you can see where it came from. I even got the barrel band springs out, which was actually not that hard as long as you use your brain and put your finger over the hole when you tap it through the other side so you don't blow out the wood got that tip from Mark Novak from Anvil Gunsmithing. Thank you very much for that. So anyway, um, let's do a quick inspection. Everything's out. Here's your cleaning rod, front barrel band spring, front barrel band, middle spring, middle band. There's your barreled action all the way down. This is the lower um, rear sight. That's the leaf with the screw still in it because I put everything back sort of the way it was. Here's the two-piece bolt, it's a bit grimy. I didn't disassemble the bolt fully because there's a spanner screw on top and I didn't want to mess with the, um, the action spring up there. So I'm probably just gonna leave it like that and scotch bright and clean that with uh, hops as, as best as I could. Like everywhere I can reach, I'll go ahead and do that. Same thing with the bolt face. Um, as for this, I'll probably boil it. Uh, I got the butt plate out which was a bit of a challenge. And no, I did not chew up the head of that screw. That is how I got it. But to prevent it from getting any worse, hollow ground screws, screwdriver bits rather. So the entire rifle came apart with literally just these two screw or these two tools. And this is just a little eyedropper full of uh, uh, Kano Croil. So here's your rear swing swivel, your trigger guard, this is the uh, trigger guard screw. This is the front action screw. The rear action screw goes up through the top. This is like, um, this is the plate that screws it together, that clamps these two pieces together. This was a little fun to take out because it's so finely in, uh, inlaid in here. Basically, you just hold your finger there, you put the screw back in, you tap it with the hammer. This hammer with this nylon head and then it just starts to wiggle, wiggle away. Then you tap this until the front tips out and eventually the whole thing just wiggles right out. So that's all out. Uh, let's see, uh, the magazine. I was gonna disassemble it. I think you just pop these wings outward in each direction and the follower and the spring comes out, but this is actually in really good shape. So I'm just gonna clean it up and oil it. I don't even have to boil this. And that's it. So let's look at the wood now. For a 150 year old gun, this is immaculate. I found no cracks, no splits, almost no oil soak actually and look at the barrel channel like it's still shiny this is the original finish no mung no oil no splits no nothing everything that's kind of grubby is on the outer outside so this i thought i was going to have to refinish but i'm not going to do anything to it i'm just going to maybe i'm going to come across it really lightly with uh four aught steel wool kind of knock down the shine a little bit and see, see if I can get some of this funk off off like the hand surfaces. And then after that, I'll just probably buff it because it's, it's already pretty nice. It doesn't have that really gorgeous curl like in the thumbnail for this video, which is, I'm kind of ashamed. I, I, I'm kind of disappointed in that, but whatever. I mean, it's in great shape, so I'm just gonna leave it. Got the barrel band stuck up there. All right, so the barreled action, obviously. The reason I take it apart, and the reason you should take it apart, you should take it apart, if you buy a mill syrup, is you wanna make sure that everything underneath the wood line is not rotten, because if it is, that could be very dangerous. 
obviously. So let's roll it over. And as you can see, no rust, no pits, no nothing. It looks like someone actually greased this, which kept it really clean, like really, really clean. And if you see how shiny that is underneath all that grime, hopefully that's what I'll be able to get the rest of the action to look like. So this is going to get uh, just hoppies and a green scotch Bright pad. I was going to use steel wool, but I'm kind of afraid I'll leave scratches in the direction I, I rub. So I'm going to use a green scotch Bright pad and just hoppies on this. And hopefully it'll clean up. And if I'm really crazy, I might even hit this with Mother's Mag Polish and a cotton cloth and see how much of a shine I can get out of it because it's not a hunting rifle or anything. I'm gonna make this real pretty. I really like this rifle, so I'll make it pretty. As for the trigger system, it's all here. It's all kind of grubby. I'm just gonna clean, bright. I'm gonna hit it with hoppies and like a toothbrush and just scrub everything out. Cause I mean, it all works. So it's just a little gummy from all this, like, I don't know, Cosmo or whatever it is. So we'll just get it all cleaned up. Same thing with the bolt and the firing pin. Uh, same thing with the stock. The only thing that I'm boiling is the butt plate, the screws, the sling swivel and screws, uh, the trigger guard, these screws. Maybe I'll boil that just to get the funk off of it. Uh, both barrel bands. I don't think I'm going to boil the springs. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to clean the springs. If they're tempered, I don't want to screw with that. And then I'll just wipe this down too. So we'll just boil all the small parts to get them nice and clean. Um, I saw a photo of this site. This is in the white, but this was black. And I don't really want to mess with chemicals and bluing. I might, I know this is ghetto, but I might just Sharpie this <laughs> just to give me the contrast. Don't hate me for that. I might just Sharpie this. I don't really want to paint it. Anyway, if I, if I Sharpie it and you hate it, just tell me you hate it and I'm an idiot. That's fine. I can take the criticism. So anyway, uh, to the boil, and you'll see this all cleaned up afterwards. I'll show you the boiling in a still shot, and then after it's all dried up and cleaned up, and then I'll do a couple of still shots of the clean parts, and when I meet you back, uh, I'll have this all reassembled, and I'll give you my final thoughts. But uh, yeah, really cool rifle. Very few parts. A little couple more than the Carcano, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, let me get to the boiling, and enjoy the montage of pictures for a little while. This is Cleo. This is proof to show you what time it was when I filmed this. When I left you last, it was about one o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. But once you get started, you just kind of want to get it over with. I'm pretty sure on my headstone, it will say, let's just get this shit over with. So, yeah, I'm pretty tired. I'm pretty beat. But I'm also incredibly satisfied. If you remember seeing the barrel and the bands earlier, and springs, and the clearing rod, and the stock, it didn't look like this when I started. Rewind a couple of minutes, you'll see what I mean. This is my completed, restored, look at that, Dutch Beaumont. So, what took so long? Well, <laughs> I stuck to my guns, pun intended, and I did not sand this. I just took Mother's Mag Polish and the buffing wheels on my Dremel tool and a lot of elbow grease. And you can tell it still didn't get it all the way out. There's still little dark spots, but 
you know what? I got it in the white. And I got it shiny. And I think it's pretty. And I think for 150 years old, a couple of little dark spots in that finish, I'm pretty sure I can live with that. Or I think as Mark would say, I think I'm going to build a bridge and get over it. But you can just see these like moments of brilliance in this finish. I mean, this thing must have been... Well, it's, it's, it's awesome now. It couldn't have been much more awesome when it was brand new. I mean, this wasn't even rolling back the clock, really. This was 150 years of deferred maintenance. And I'm just very grateful that this thing wasn't rotten by the time it got into my possession. I mean, that trigger was grimy and just, like, brown. It's supposed to be in the white. This trigger guard is supposed to be in the white. It's about as white as I can get it without being abusive and aggressive. That bolt is supposed to be in the white. As is the receiver. As is the barrel. As is the rear sight. I did not take a sharpie to that rear leaf. It's still dark, mostly. Uh, that and I didn't have a sharpie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was looking for a black sharpie and I didn't have it. But uh, I boiled all of it. You saw it in the picture earlier. And it cleaned up gorgeous. Like, I'm very happy with this. The magazine's obviously painted. Some of it came off. But uh, I boiled everything but the magazine because I didn't want to mess with this too much. I didn't want to mess with the temper in the spring. I didn't want to mess with the temper in the spring on the bolt either. I only put the bolt face in the water. No, no, I did put the whole bolt in there. Never mind. I did put the whole bolt in there because it was only 212 degrees. I'm pretty sure that didn't take the temper out of a leaf spring. Just tired. These were concreted in place. Now I'm happy to say that they actually move, which is good. As does this one. It's still a bit tight. This one's actually a bit tighter than the front one, or the rear one. And I'm just really tired. My arthritis is crap. Never get old. My best piece of advice. I didn't have to refinish the stock. I just gently rubbed a little bit. Of, I hand rubbed some oil on it to kind of just bring out the finish. It's beautiful. Look at that cartouche. It's like it was struck yesterday. I even cleaned up the butt plate a little bit. If you want to see. It's not perfect, but it's not brown anymore. I don't know if that's going to show up in the light. Come on, gimbal. Play nice. There we go. It's cleaner. <laughs> Silverer. So anyway, uh... Thanks for watching this old Gat Dutch Beaumont episode. I always do these outros kind of screwed up. It's my own fault. I think I have a good excuse this time, though. It's 1.30 in the morning. Plus, I've been fighting a stomach virus. Yeah, that's a different story for another time. But anyway, uh, I've got the brass for it. I need to slug the barrel which I believe is still a 458 or 457. So the bullets for this shouldn't be hard to find. I have some primers and I've got a pretty nice, uh, I've got a smokeless powder recipe for this black powder rifle. Thanks to Iraq veteran 8888. He gave me a good number to start with. I'm gonna hit him up and see if maybe he's refined that recipe since his last video for this rifle, but at least it's a baseline. And I can just take a chronograph and see what's up. But, uh, let me, I guess, let me go over what I had to use. Um, three flat tip hollow ground screwdriver bits that came with my Winchester gunsmithing screwdriver kit. Uh, my brass and polymer headed, uh, punch hammer. Uh, one sixteenth punch to drive out the opposite side to get these uh, leaf springs out or the barrel band springs out and my Dremel tool and I think that's really it like I you this uh, this gun's got 20 parts in it basically and you only had to use like six tools but it was six correct tools 
don't just go in there with you know regular screwdrivers or whatever because you'll end up like the idiot who owned it before me and mess up that screwdriver or screw head a little bit i have an anvil on the way to kind of smash this back into place but it's not here yet so i can live with that too but anyway yeah i just here let me give you one last good clean shot of this thing let me know how you think this gimbal works i'm not really good at it yet but i'm thinking it's less shaky i'm kind of i'm kind of cool with it i really like how shiny that is there I think this is going to definitely turn some heads at the gun range. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think I've probably gone on long enough. I'm tired. I need some sleep. Probably need to get something to eat, too. It's been a long day. But uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Maybe hit the old like button down that way a little bit. I still got to wash my hands. And, uh, yeah. Pretty cool rifle. I paid way too much for it. And now I've broken my fingers trying to get this thing clean, but uh, I'm pretty happy. You guys should be too. Anyway, I think I've wasted enough of your time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Later. Say goodnight, Cleo. Say goodnight, Cleo. <laughs> anyway. Peace.